Hey guys, Strike here, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last one, we entered the stunning church of Dolores Day. And we spoke to this little lady, setting up whatever the hell she's setting up, and a ton of weird supernatural shit happened over here. And we met the Crab Man. If any of that sounds a little bit too insane for a relatively grounded game, then yes, it absolutely is, and I'm terrified, which is why we're gonna get out of here as soon as possible. Now, we got quite a few things to do. I'm very, 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 very nervous to continue, uh, to continue exploring. Because, oh, hello, I didn't even notice that this was a thing. Considering that, um, I'm sort of worried that I'm gonna miss some important characters because I'm exploring while it's, you know, every, while it's so late and everything's dark and everyone's gone home, a dead phone, a smash receiver. Like, someone hung up too hard. What is this building? Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. What of this little thing right here? A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. Could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Uh, okay, dial a random number, why not? This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? End of tone, someone picks up. Pierre? Is that you, Pierre? The voice is female and sounds about a hundred years old. Yeah, it's me, Pierre. So nice of you to find the time to call me. It gets so lonely. Even the animals have died. That's not good. Now, what kind of pets did you have? Are you sure you're Pierre? The voice, it's different. I, the chrysanthemum. Anthem. Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like the waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. Get a sinking feeling, it makes you... You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look... It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. Okay, I see. To your relief, he did not. Again? Seriously? Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, you're electricity. Excuse me? No, what you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. What the fuck? Uh, uh is electricity there? I need to speak with electricity, please. Uh, no, uh, hey, Gerard. Get your wife for me, will you? Uh, who is this? The man does not understand. Um, it's Pierre. Now put her on. I don't like waiting. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Okay? Who the fuck do you think you are talking to me like that? The voice on the phone is suddenly very agitated. Uh, Guillaume. Guillaume de Mion. Very funny, so Why don't you grow up? Oh, and Disco is dead! Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. I mean, I might as well keep doing this bullshit, right? Stop calling me, man! So it picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get your money, alright? I just need till tonight. Let me work. Uh, who is this? Actually, oh no, no, no. I can say, if I say that, then he'll get, uh, he'll get very, you know, he'll then die because he thinks he doesn't need to pay. Uh, you seem to be in some sort of trouble. Maybe I can help you. I'm a police officer. The phone hanged up as fast as lightning. All you hear is a little shuffle of nylon as the hand moves on the other end. Disconnect zone. <clears throat> a single... <clears throat> Let's you know that the lieutenant is ready to move on now. I don't give a fuck, lieutenant. I'm tired. The man answers. Fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You hear typing in the background. What are you tired of? Writing. I hate writing so much, but I have to get back to it. You, you, did n you do not hear the customary disconnect tone. Just silence in the handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. It sometimes happens. Okay. Uh, leave. Save. Put on your damn interfacing gloves just to make sure. As everyone knows, it's so much easier to dial a fucking phone number when you're wearing gardening gloves covered in corpse juice. Here we go. Yay! You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial. And pull down on the number. And move one up and repeat the motion twice. Strange. 
This is not how you started before. What did I just do? You dialed 001. This is not the area code of Revachon. It's another destination. But another Isola? Some far off nation state. 005 is Revachol SAR. 001 is Grad. On the Grad Isola, where the telephone was invented. The next two digits you dial are the area code of the, the city for Morova. Keep dialing. 41, 44, 47. The rotary dial feels cold from the sea air. 11, 17, 361. Your fingers keep moving like a spider. Every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. There's more? Yes. 451, 67, 451. You're going deeper now, into some unknown place far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. 451. You've dialed God knows how many numbers. This hair headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your ear fills with a crackle, the swash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local calling tone from before. No. A small ring in a cage of distortion. Far away, a distant network of phones. Calling. Calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. Calling still. The handset starts flipping. Slipping, sorry, from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Kim. The lieutenant is f too far to hear your yelp. Sea wind blows. Let it call more. Calling, 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 calling. Calling still. The uh, then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges. Small. The dearest thing you ever heard. Hello? She sounds sleepy. Hello. <sighs> she hums. Her voice warm from sleep. Who is this? Who is this? Dora. Who is this? She's still the confused. Is bad. Dora. The name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live. Your voice is so beautiful. No, no. It's you, isn't it? It's you. She's waking up now. I don't want to say these two, but I have to know who you are. You're the woman. I'm a revolutionary servant of humanity. I will free mankind and abolish the classes. I will raise the dead. You're not a revolutionary, Harry. You're drunk. You have only two, maybe three things left to say before the change runs out. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? Oh, God. The silence. It's heavy as tin. The white noise howls. Hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. Sounds like she's looking for a clock on the nightstand. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. You're in Morova, right? Yes, I'm in Morova. Sleeping. I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? This is bad. You feel the right, your right hand on the handset cramping with pain. Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy where I work. That sounds better than my job. I'm happy for you. No response. Only a sigh. Connection crackles like burning paper. I am the law. I'm a detective. I'm doing a case. There's a hanged man. She does not answer anymore. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. 
The machine ran out of money. Oh my god! It's her! That was so sad! Life is garbage! Oh... God... Does not look like she want- It looks like she does not want to pick it up. Harry, stop scaring her. Why? On you know why. Harry, please. A sad voice answers, dressed in distortion. I need answers to my mystery. Please. I'm going to hang up now, okay? Fuck you, that was ten cent, I'm kidding. Oh, buzz. Hum. Electricity throws, flows through the wires with audible power. Ah, my soul. Bars cover these long, dusty windows. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. It must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No. He shakes his head. The windows rattle in their frames. I won't even try. You know. He takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes, because he had to show me things. It's that bad. His partner of his, Eyes. Things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk? Can you still shoot, though? Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I passed my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Well, good news for you, buddy. Fuck me, that's depressing. I can't believe all this happened. Fuck me, Harry! <laughs> that was so sad. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. That's it? That's it? Why is that it? That was something we could actually interact with, and that was it? Yay, I got all my fucking payphone money back. Thank you, payphone money. The fence blocks your path. No way on from here. It looks like I can go around that way, though, and that is probably the coast where, like, the buoy is and all of that shit, so I will go there soon. I'm just enjoying exploring this area right now. I can't believe that happened with the payphone. Oh, my God. That nearly broke me. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. Smells really bad. Take a closer look. It's streets with dried seagull shit and tangled pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket underneath beneath the crust of filth. Seems likely that it was left here left in the surf until someone laid it out on this bench to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? It's a guano encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying around enough as it is. I want it! We can inspect it, apparently. Why the fuck not? We might as well. This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's streaked with seagull shit and, ab and abnormally stiff from god knows what natural processes. Can't even tell what brand it is. Yeah, because that's how <laughs> the most important thing. Ugh, man. How did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid and filthy tail. Not for the weak. Are you sure you could stomach it? Eh. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather a thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that it esconces it. Nice word. Good thing I'm wearing my gardener gloves and not my lovely fingerless ones. Gross. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands! They're coming in muck! Ew, ew, ew! Flick your hands! Oh my god, my morale is nearly suicide worthy. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere! This is a disaster, you'll never get the smell out! Well, that was great. Why did I f- <laughs> Just put it away. Just put it away forever. <laughs> why, why have I got this with me? I love that that's even a possibility. Alright, have a look at this. 19 cents in a barrel! That is exactly where you put your spare change. That's correct. A makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. 
That tarp will keep out neither rain, nor snow, nor even wind. Another postcard though, I'm building up quite the collection here, I like that. I don't sell any of them though, do I? I just keep them all on me. A coin-operated weighing machine. Hasn't been used for a decade. Very specific there, sir. Ooh, plus two encyclopedia, minus one perception. Vagrants have recently painted the top red. Water drips from it. I wonder if vagrants would actually be here if I came at a, a reasonable time. Well, to be fair, it's not like they're going anywhere, is it? I'm sure they're probably just under the top. We ain't got time to look around from there. A big wine canister. It's open. And empty. I'm so glad I haven't made my Harry Joe. Oh my god, what happened to you, sir? The smell. It's awful. Familiar. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That hideous pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness? Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Is this a dead hobo? Fuck me, that's depressing. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Okay, I don't know what it is, so that, that's why I want to examine it. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you can find. A tragedy. Lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. Shakes his head with genuine sadness. Why? Examine the cigarette package. Well, probably the dead guy, not the alcohol. You see traces of mayonnaise in the kebab wrapper. And ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper simply reads, Shish Kebab Revachon. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. This coin-operated viewer has been out of order for years. What the fuck is this? Working class corpse. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him, an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. All done. Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, he's been dead for two days. No longer. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. We need to investigate. Another dead body. This is your job, steal yourself. Study the surroundings. Some kind of dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery, wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby, and a chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Well, they step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet, ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was what caused the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. It could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would never have found him. Examine the bottle. A, a 0.75 liter. Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. Hardly anything left inside. So, uh, all around us. He looks at two other bottles forgotten near the coin-operated viewer. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rybolski. Spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. I think you see white chewing gum too. He hit the whole back, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is... Mad shudders from the cold. I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even with the chewing gum. It's always the same. In a ditch off a... Of, in a ditch off a road... Fuck me. In a ditch off a road below the 881, he thinks. A young father. And he shakes his head to make the memory stop. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. 
An open wound. Sticky. Cold to your touch. This is what killed him. This is where he came out of himself. Drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds. Do you? It's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step back. Let's take a look at the clothes. He's wearing mud-caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Search his pockets. A folded library card, huh? You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card. Folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at the library card after this is done. I guess that'll give us some kind of indication as to who he might be. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still tangling. I think they mean dangling through the hole. A bad form. Might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes empty and wide. Look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build. Age, approximately 50 to 60 years. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. That's what the chewing gum seems to point to as well. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. You'd have to know the spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you can- I mean, we did! I guess it's an investigation though. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? Have I changed his voice again? Has he gotten way more Russian? What have I done? This is an omen. A sign from above. Don't start drinking again. Thank you, Inland Empire. You're actually one of my favorite. You're so helpful. He looks like me. I could have ended up just like him. Dead on some empty boardwalk with a bottle next to my corpse. Well, at least you're not married. Kim points at the ring on the man's left hand. The flesh around it, swollen and gray. But what if you are? But let's not r run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Hmm. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. What about the kebab? That sounds important. What about it? The deceased ate some kebab? It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Best quote of the game so far. I'm gonna get that tattooed on my cock. Right. Can it be related to the lynching? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident. Unrelated to the murder case. Agreed. This somehow converges later, why not? I'll keep it simple for now. Do you think he was drunk? Oh, yes. The lieutenant nods. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think the death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. I'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. What it does is keep the city council's hands clean. He smiles sourly. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Though there's still the question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? From where I stand, they can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on, what about the field autopsy? And field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. This looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we just write down head trauma into the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. 
Yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have that much time or resources to spare. The guys are processing will take care of the rest. We found him. We should finish this. All right. We should first examine that library card you found. Then we can call the station for Mekanima. Let them know we're taking the case. And let's take a look, shall we? I'm sure I put it right next to my shit-covered jacket. Perfect! A library card found from a pocket of the dead man on Martinet's boardwalk. Still slightly damp to the touch. The cover bears the stamp of Jamrock Public Library. Library card is folded into two and slightly wet to the touch. That's I just read this, okay. Issued to Billy Mijon. Expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio Thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinting Curve by M. Thibault. The library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Look at the backside. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 025 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78 Jamrock. Business hours, 9 to 6. Good. He takes a note. We should give them a call for Mekanima. See if we can learn anything about Billy Majon. Put it away. Well, corpse. I'm gonna have to leave you behind, buddy. What a disaster this fucking town is. I don't know, is this a city? What is Martinez? It is just like a small town, right? I'm pretty sure. It doesn't seem... Doesn't seem big enough to be an actual city. Uh, I want to explore all of this. I really, really do. But I think a very, 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 very important thing to do right now is return to the, uh, return to the arsehole kids. Oh, hello. I didn't notice this. Full of holes. Could the post say treasure? Look inside. I have heard that this is an actual thing, right? Guys, look at the, look at the, fuck you, look at the fucking holes. 90 cents. Oh my god, I can do one by one. Dr what the fuck? This is perfect. I can finally start healing myself again. I got really worried when we started uh, really running out. Some more morale pills. Because just eating metal straight up apparently makes you the happiest man in the world. I'm not exactly sure why that's a thing, but it totally is. Is the music still happening? It is. Oh my god, you're still outside, you poor, poor girl. Talk to me. I'd rather talk to you first than them. Hello? Thank you. Or not. Fine. I thought I'd be able to tell you guys about, you know, the lady we found. See you later, Kim. I love that it does just stick at 2am so you can, you know, just keep on going. Right, you, can I talk to- Oh, I'm gonna have to voice Good you morning. again, aren't I? Fuck off! You, I guess. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? He looks excited. The tips of his hair are sharp and white. The bleach has consumed almost all of the toothbrush on the mirror in front of him. About the church. I checked it out. And? He tenses up. What happened? I talked to the crab man. Oh, man, who is he? What did you think? Seemed okay, to be honest. Very spiritual. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Yeah, just preaching and praying from the looks of it. Yeah, fuck that. That's fine. No matter. Paranoid young man mumbles gruffly. Is he gonna be a problem? Yeah, annoyed is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we gonna do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Ah. Uh... He keeps himself physically active, thinks spiritual thoughts, and doesn't drink. Who am I to evict such a person? I mean, he was a little bit of a dick. He was just too intriguing to hate. Uh, as far as I can tell, he's not going to leave. He'll climb around up there. And guys, you'll never catch him. But it, actually, he told me he wouldn't mind a nightclub at all. Let's go with that. Oh, I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? He rubs his jaw. A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have a nice, friendly hyper time. Uh... Don't worry, I don't really think he gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! 
Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? I was using the mainframe when Suna, the formerly programmer of Fortress Accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Uh, she did not like the idea... Sorry, the, she did not like the Anoda Dance Club idea. What a pity. It's my favorite thing in the world. He drops a hammer back in the toolbox. She doesn't like it at all. I don't remember what I made him sound like, so he's going like that for now, for some reason. A shame, he sighs. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam and into a laser-lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! She made it very clear she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, Otto Man. No, Noid, he's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. And ecstasy. <laughs> the lights of the dark exist. Coexist. At least the crab man seems like an advanced beam. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, I, he can do his climbing thing in the tower, and the programmer. She likes him though, dance music. Uh, she absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment. But then he returns to the full swing of it. Don't you ever stop pumping that jam, Egg. Uh, no worries, we'll figure it out. Man nods enthusiastically, and leans in and whispers. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? It's all okay if it's all okay with you. What do you think? Um, I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. He smiles wide, like a replica of his friend with a large head. Excellent! Oh, good luck, my friend! Well, have we aligned now, Mr. Noid? Uh, I see you're here again, upside down.